All right, guys, while well, some of you get it, some people are still very insistent on paying for the butterfly tax. So if I had to choose a Benchmade to buy in 2023, what would it be? So to be fair, I don't entirely hate Benchmade. And I will say, I do think the smartest way to buy a Benchmade, especially nowadays with all of the, you know, secondary market options is definitely to buy one off of the secondary market, usually through something like knife forums or through, you know, different Facebook pages and such. There are plenty of ways to buy Benchmades. And I think buying them on the secondary market is the best way to genuinely like realistically avoid the butterfly tax. But if I had to choose a blade, which model would it be? Well, ultimately I think you're looking at the top three models of Benchmade that I would choose if I had to choose one. So first off, if I had to choose a brand new like two day Benchmade, I think it would honestly have to be the 273 mini Adamus, this guy right here. Now it's not my personal favorite because there are some lock issues as you guys can hopefully hear, I'll say. Hopefully you guys can hear that. Um, there are some lock rock issues if you try to hard to use the Mini Adamus. And even to this day, to the credit of the Dutch Bushcraft Bros, um, they have, or Dutch Bushcraft Knife Bros, something like that. They recently retested the Mini Adamus. And unfortunately, while it is better than the first generation Mini Adamuses, they still are not the best and their newer model of the Mini Adama still ultimately failed hard to use testing. However, they are making strides to make this knife better, at least it seems. And so I will say, I do think that the Benchmade Mini Adamus probably has to be, if I had to choose of the new like knife models and makes, um, this would probably be it. Either this, or if you can find a mini freak, especially a mini freak in M4, that would also be a really venerable option. I think those, those two models offer the most value. Now they're also not going to be cheap, but they offer, I think the most value of any option. So for me, I would say the um, Benchmade Mini Adamus or the Mini Freak in M4 would probably be my choices. But for this video, we'll say the Mini Adamus. In addition to like the Mini Adamus to me, I really love the style. It's very Shane Seibert esque which is the you know designer of the Adamus in general. General. And I think the Mini Adamus is just a very pocket friendly, very EDC friendly um, knife. I just really, really wish that Benchmade would get their act together and make this as durable as the Generation 1 275 Adamus is, because I had an original 275 and I think it would be very cool to have that same aesthetic, that same you know, style of knife, but you know, like just as tanky, just shrunk down. And that's why I originally bought a mini Adamus is because I really dig the style of the Adamus as a whole and the miniature version of it just makes it a little bit more pocket friendly. With all that said, like I said, I still do pocket carry that mini Adamus that you guys see here. Even with its lock rock, I'm just a little bit more careful with it. So anyways, going on to more knives. I'm not entirely sure if Benchmade is really still pumping out mini grips or griptilians as a whole, but griptilians are undoubtedly the bread and butter of Benchmade. So griptilians are really hard to go wrong with, and they're probably some of the cheapest Benchmades you can buy. Now, once again, mini grips, unfortunately nowadays are definitely still not cheap. Um, I remember back in the good old days when you could easily get a full-size griptilian um, and even mini grips for around 60 to $80. Unfortunately, those days have largely passed. Once again, unless you're able to go on the secondary market and get some really good deals on mini grips and full-sized grips, um, you're really gonna be paying, you know, like around 120 to 150. But even at that price point, they're still not bad knives. Once again, this is the bread and butter of Benchmade. It, they are really solidly made. This thing is actually, has 
or I should say that this knife actually has a more solid access lock than this freaking um, mini Adamus, which is sad because this has full metal liners on it. This is a much tougher and actually heavier knife than this full-sized Griptilian, but this Griptilian is actually stronger than this mini, or mini Adamus. So anyways, Frustrations aside, um, the Griptilian is a very hard knife to go wrong with, and the nice thing is the newer versions, this is of course a very old version, I think like circa 2009, 2010, but the newer versions come in S30V, and of course there are ones you can get that are in CPM 20CV and a myriad of different special or limited edition steel options. So they are out there, but this one of course is in good old 154CM. Now, lastly, in talking about original knives, um, if I had to choose an original Benchmade, I would say that the Benchmade 940, especially if you can choose one of the original Benchmades, and you can tell the originals from the new, primarily because um, on the newer Benchmades, you'll notice that a lot of them have like, um, on this side specifically, I believe it is, they have the um, website to their access patent. So like they are patented or they patented the access lock and it shows that I think there's like a website to it. I'm trying to remember not all of their um, newer knives have that but I do believe the newer um, Osborns do. But with that said, um, these guys are really cool. They're very hard to go wrong with. And once again, um, depending on what your application is, the Benchmade 940 is one of the most like pocket friendly one of the most pocket-friendly blades out there, so it's super hard to go wrong with one. Um, they are, in my opinion, a little bit thin. They're not my you know, favorite, absolute favorite EDC knife because they feel sometimes a little bit more like pencil than they do a knife, but they are very proven, and I would recommend much to the chagrin of, I think, my fellow EDC YouTubers, I would actually recommend if you do pick one up, get one in the aluminum handles, um, just because I feel like the metal or aluminum handles give this blade that little bit of extra weight that it needs to feel just substantial in your hand. And once again, I don't wanna say like substantial as in, oh man, this thing's heavy, because even the aluminum handled version of the 940 is still incredibly lightweight, but that's the whole thing that the, um, non like the g10 carbon fiber handled versions of the 940 in my opinion personally feel a little bit too lightweight and so i actually dislike carrying them and my original 940 was like a 940-2 was in like black g10 and stuff and that one i actually really disliked carrying because it was just so darn lightweight so i know that kind of sounds counterintuitive of like you know, uh, you generally want a lighter knife, but I think when it comes to the 940 with how thin and slender the blade and overall knife is as a whole, I think it really serves it well to have a, um, <clears throat> to go with the, you know, uh, aluminum handles. So anyways, if I had to choose an original old school Benchmade, um, it'd probably be this. Of course, I mean this as in like, production and knives that are reasonably readily accessible. Of course, if I could say any old school bench made, it would be the 630 full-sized skirmish because this was like one of my original grail knives, but this is a grail knife because it's a knife that's hard to obtain. So I'm not gonna put the 630 skirmish on this list just because it's a very, like I said, hard knife to get. So anyways, um, hopefully enjoyed the video looking at um, Benchmades that I do genuinely recommend. Once again, I don't think every Benchmade is necessarily bad. I just dislike Benchmade largely because I feel that um, for the price that you pay for these knives, the value that you get back out of them doesn't always add up. Now, once again, these are three examples where I do think that the value is pretty close to the price that you will pay for them, especially some of these Griptilians because you can get into Griptilians for you can get into Griptilians for such a reasonable price. So I do think most times, especially on the secondary market, if you're buying a Griptilian, it's probably a good deal. So anyways, guys, hopefully enjoyed the video in the commentary. As always, God bless, and I'm out.